Hi, welcome to uh, 20 ideas of uh, making different things, different little projects using two and a half inch strips. We've been having a lot of fun with these. There's 20 in total and we're up to number 10. So this is pretty exciting. We've made some fun stuff. So if you've already signed up on GourmetQuarter.com, you'll have a pattern that looks something like this. And um, we've there's more information on the website there if you're interested in getting the pattern or anything. Um, so that's gourmetquilter.com. And I am Susan Clay, the Gourmet Quilter, because quilting is delicious. And these projects are delicious. So today we're going to make a really cute, fun little drawstring bag. So it's got squares, it's got strips, it's kind of fun. Um, so it's a square little bag. It sits square, it sits nicely open. We've got a little... A loopy type casing for the cord and we've even got little pockets inside so how cute is that so we'll get started so I've got everything I need here I've got some squares some strips um, some batting I've got my cord I've got pretty much everything my sewing machine let's get going so I would just mention with the batting I have said in the pattern that you need thin batting and I mean thin it needs to be pretty pliable because otherwise it gets really difficult to do some of the little things so just a nice soft thin batting works really nicely in there so we will get going so I've already done a little bit of sewing but not very much so we need some strips so on the outside of the bag I've alternated strips going up and across so I've already joined my pairs of strips so see it wasn't so bad so I just need to decide what order I'm going to put them together in now um, and I'm not really too worried about that because they're all nice bright colours. So I need to make a whole row of them. I've got my four squares, now they're going on the base and I've got those ready here. Um, so when we join these together, we need to, before we do that, I'm going to actually pop a little piece of batting behind them and I'm just going to quilt. So the batting's cut to the same size I'm just going to quilt either side of the seam, so it doesn't matter which way they go, they can just kind of go through um, all at once, um, chain piecing them through with the quilting. Uh, and this one here, so this is for the base, so what we like to do on the base is make the base just a little bit firmer, so I've actually got two layers of the batting in the base, so that's just like a little four patch, and I'm going to quilt that one in a little grid all the way across, in fact maybe I'll start doing that right now so that you can see what I mean but I'm sure you can probably work that out for yourself. So I'm just going to make my stitch length a touch longer because I didn't do that before. I just like it a little bit bigger when I'm quilting I find it works really nicely for me. So because we want the base just a little bit more solid, just a little bit more quilting, so maybe every half inch or so, another line of sewing, and I'm going to go in both directions because I think it would be nice to have that sort of grid on the base. So I think probably you can work that bit out. So I'll go ahead and do that, and I'm also going to put these through while I'm at it. I'm going to do, as I said, quarter of an inch either side of all my strips on their squares of batting. So I'll go ahead and get all these little bits ready and then show you how we start putting them together. So I've gone ahead and I've quilted so I've got the double batting in the base with the little squares on it and on the back you can see my stitching probably better than on the front. I've just done a nice little grid so it just gives it a little bit of firmness for the base and then on the sides I've just gone either side of that um, seam line there which and it, that's all it needs because they're only small pieces so we need to join these up into a row now but because we're going to make them into a square bag we have to allow for the corners here so when we join them up um, if you've got a top and a bottom of your of your pieces of your bag make sure that at the bottom end you leave a quarter of an inch before you start sewing we need to be able to open that out a quarter of an inch and so you could come from the top and stop a quarter of an inch before the end and what I have found is that by the time I get to the end I've forgotten where quarter of an inch is so I start at the top or I start at the bottom quarter of an inch in so for me that works just thought I'd tell you all about it so you can pop a little pin in if you need to for your starting point if you're not sure where that quarter inch is um, other than that I'm going to start sewing quarter of an inch down so I need to join all 
four of these together. Just remember if you're going to turn them sideways, you may not want to. You might want all of yours in strips, but I'm going to go alternating. I'm going to start off with a little lock stitch and just stitch my seams, just that quarter inch seam through so that they all have that little bit open at the bottom there. And then we're actually going to press those seams open. It will just all sit a bit better if they're pressed open. So I can uh, press one open now um, and just show you. I'm sure you know how to press the seam open. But, uh, but don't forget, leave that open, uh, that quarter of an inch at the bottom there. So I'm going to go ahead and sew the rest of my patches together leaving my little gap, make sure they're all at the same end, that will be very helpful. Um, and then I'll, and so you can make them up into a full circle, so we can sew them all four seams together in that same way because it's going to sit around our base. So I'll go ahead and get that done and show you how to put it all together. So I've joined my little loop up here and I've just got to press this last seam open. So that's looking pretty good. So my open end is down here with my little open ends on my seams. And so what we want to do now is position that right sides together with our base. So the base is sitting in there nicely. And we're going to st stitch it all the way around, but I'm going to do it one side at a time because I found it's just so much easier. So these little seams that we left open are going to form a little tiny square when they're stitched in. So that's our little seam allowance that allows us to go around those corners. And so if I put a pin in where we're going to start there, so we're going to start sewing right there where that fabric starts and we're going to do the same thing at the other end. And we're going to put another pin in there. Oops. Not very good with pins, they kind of attack me. And we could even put another pin in the middle there just to hold that in place so because it, it's just small things and they're a little bit fiddly so we're just going to sew from this edge all the way along keeping this out of the way and stopping there and then we're going to take it out and we're going to do the same thing with the next seam so I'll just I'll do this one sh to show you and then we can uh, I, I can get the others done after that as well so just starting right at that so fold this little piece out of your way to get started so you can see where you are right on that little point there just holding the, the rest of this out of the way making sure that everything is not caught underneath or, or anything and um, again I'm just going to hold this corner at this end out of the way so that when I get there I know when I'm there a little back stitch just to hold it on that corner and that's sitting really nicely so now we have to go and do exactly the same thing on the other three sides so I can go ahead now and do that and then I'll come back and show you how to do the next stage so it's looking quite exciting it's inside out but it looks looking pretty good um, so that all went together really nicely around the base there with all of those corners just sitting nicely there. So I'm really pleased about that, just as well. Um, and now what we're going to do is make these little loops to put our cord through, because we can stitch those to the top. Um, so what we've got here is some strips, and what we're going to do is just fold them in half. I've already done some of this. So I just like to fold it in half, and then I just really want those raw edges into the middle there. And then just press that over and then stitch two lines of sewing along there. So I might just quickly do that because we want to get these cut and put onto the little uh, bag. And back the other way. So I've already done the others. There's actually four of these. And we just want to cut those in half because we only need half the length but it was easier to work with a longer strip than really tiny little ones when you're doing that 
um, double sewing like that and I thought that we could do it that way and I've just done multicolored. This one I actually alternated two fabrics. This one I've done four. I'm kind of using up some of the little bits and pieces that I've got and it's kind of nice to have this fun color going on. So what we want to do now is position these on and we're just going to fold those in half nothing terribly hard about this and position them in the center of half there it's two to each side of the bag and I'm just going to extend it beyond a little bit they're just a little bit long to have them as they are and I've got some of these wonderful little clippy things here so I'm just going to clip those on because then I'm going to stitch around at the top of the machine uh, sorry with the machine just an eighth of an inch in just to hold them in place so on on the sides where we haven't got the seam coming up if you've done what I've done you just need to find your center point which is easy enough to find with a pin so that you can work out where these little bits go on that side so you just want it halfway between the seam and the center point so centered all the way around so I'll go ahead and get these done I'm going to machine around as I said about an eighth of an inch down just to hold them in place so I've gone ahead and I've just attached all those so they're all sticking out at the moment we can uh, trim them off you could trim them off now but it's probably easier to trim them off a bit later so that's all happy just sitting there waiting for the next stage what we need to do now is make the lining so there's it's a fully lined little bag which is really nice and because it's got these little pockets in the side there we can pop those in as we make the lining so I've already started getting my pockets ready it's again it's just two strips joined together this one I've already stitched down and folded over and then just top stitched about a quarter of an inch away so I haven't stitched this one yet but I have stitched that one so we need to put these together now so much the same as the outside bag but we've just really got to make another one for the inside but there's no batting behind these and the way I've made it up so we've got one for the base is to have a little pocket on two opposite sides rather than two next two sides you could put them all the way around but they do get a little bit bulky on the seam so I thought that if I just put them on the opposite sides or every alternate square as we do it and we've just got to join that up exactly the same way as when we did this and we're going to press the seams open we're going to leave our quarter of an inch at the bottom of each seam so that we can stitch it to the base just like we did for the outside of the bag so I'm going to top stitch my pocket join them up leave my quarter inch at the bottom join it in a circle press all the seams open oh so many things to do I'll go ahead and get started so I've done my seams and I'm just pressing the last one open again and when you're pressing these open with the pockets it's tempting to want to let the pocket sit that way but we actually need to press it back on itself because we need to be able to access that little opening at the bottom of the seam and the other thing I didn't mention before was that on the lining because it's going to be inside the bag and there's a little bit of batting and things just take a very slightly larger than quarter of an inch so not three eighths of an inch or anything but like we do a scant seam which is just a thread under we're going just a little bit over so slightly over a quarter of an inch seam allowance and to press them back so that you've got that access there so and then so now I've got my four bits together I've got two of them with pockets inside and now we need to put the base in just the same as we've done on the outside of the bag there's really no difference except that there's no batting in this lot so I'll go ahead and get those stitched in and show you how we're going to put the bag together so I've done my three sides around the base but I just thought I'd show you the last one just so that you can see how that it really does all fit together so I've just swung this little corner around here and it's going to sit there and everything is fitting really nicely so it's worth doing this little bit in, and on this last one you probably don't even really need to pin it because everything is just sitting where it should do so I'll go ahead and I'll sew it and you can see that it really is that straightforward
So that's looking pretty good. We've got our corners. We don't need to actually turn it out because it's aligning and it will be sitting inside out or outside in or one of those things. But it's nice to have a little look and see how things are looking with our little pockets. And, and that's all looking pretty good. So we're going to put that, put that now. We can turn this out the right way now because we actually want to put this inside the lining. So we're going to put a right side out bag inside a wrong side out lining. Um, oh, and one other thing I didn't mention, one of the sides has got an opening and we need an opening on one of the sides without the pocket so that we can turn it through. So leave the opening as large as you can so that we've got to turn all this bulk through it. Um, but it's definitely come along a little bit from each corner but leave a gap in there. So I've got my lining sitting nicely, my bag sitting quite nicely and I'm just going to place that inside and we're just going to match up the four corner seams now. Um, and we can just do that with the, the little clips or some pins and make sure that your little tabs are sitting inside there and we're just going to be getting this ready and then stitching all the way around that top edge um, about a quarter of an inch as usual um, same on that and then and then we can trim off the excess on those little tabs and we'll be turning it out the right way so once we've got that all sitting there nicely now we just need to as I said just stitch around that so the easiest way to do that is to stitch kind of on the inside so it always looks a little bit awkward um, if you have a free arm and this machine does have a free arm you can turn it out the other way but it's probably just about as easy to do it this way anyway so I'm just going to take my quarter inch seam allowance all the way around it doesn't really matter where you start because you've got to come back to wherever it is and straight over those tabs straight over your open seams just make sure all your edges are staying together. So I'll just keep going and I will see you when I get to the other end. So I've gone all the way around and now I'm just clipping off these extra bits of these loops. We don't need those in there. It wouldn't really matter if they were in there but I see no reason to leave them there. And then we just want to turn that out. So hopefully my gap is is big enough that I've left here. It should be because this is quite soft and it will just pull through. Yes, we're going to make it. That's that. So now what we need to do is we do need to close the little gap and you can hand slip stitch that or you can actually sew it on the sewing machine. I'm probably going to sew it on the sewing machine. But I'm not going to sew it just yet because I just want to make sure that everything else is pushed out and whilst I've got that little gap there if I needed to put something in to help me even if it's just my finger to help me push these little corners out on the outside of the bag it's actually easier to do while you can still get in between. So I think that's looking pretty good now. So now I, I can sew that, but I can also sew that little gap later. Um, we'll deal with the inside in a little while. So what I'd like to do now is go around and press all that, that top edge, and then we're going to do a line of, of top stitching fairly close to the edge, maybe somewhere between an, an eighth and a quarter of an, an inch. But it's easier if you can press it first. And the same thing, it will be easier to sew it. I like to sew it on the right side of my fabric, on the outside. So I'll have it in that way at the moment. I'm going to press it all and then I'm going to go around and top stitch just on the fabric, just below those little loops that are there. So I'll go ahead and get this done and show you the next bit. So I'm just doing the last bit of, hoping you can see it kind of wants to flip up. But just that last bit of my top stitching coming round there, it's all looking pretty good. So by having it like that you can kind of 
keep turning it around as you need to. So I haven't stitched my gap yet, but as I said, I can do that later. So we want to just pop those corners, push the corners right into, from of the lining, right into the corner of the bag. And so one thing I found as a way of keeping those corners in, and I've done it on this one here, I pop one out. You can you can see I've just sewn a little tiny bead. Now it's, it has to be a bead that's large enough for your your sewing needle, hand sewing needle to get through. But if you, if you put a little bead in the corner, it it kind of doesn't get in the way of anything. It's kind of a nice little surprise to have a sudden little bead in the corner. Um, but it also holds that lining in really nicely so that it doesn't want to to jump around too much. So that so the way to do that would be to bring out the lining of your bag and your corner together like that and then just sew a little bead on. I've got some little tiny bright red beads by the look um, that I'm going to sew into the corners. But that's a little hand stitching, uh, something that I can do later. Just thought I'd mention it. You don't have to have a bead. You could just do a little stitch there just again to hold those corners in place and it just makes the bag sit a little bit better inside. So then we've got our cord to do, we've got to make our cord ends. Now we've made these before when we were making our little Otidama balls and bags. So um, fold your fabric up right sides together and then fold it back again. And then we're just going to stitch probably about three quarters of an inch in from the edge. It's just easier on a larger piece and then we're going to trim that down. So I'll go ahead so it's all folded up ready to sew. I'm just going to sew about a three quarters of an inch seam allowance and then we'll trim it down afterwards. So I actually use the markings on my uh, little uh, plate on the sewing machine when I'm doing things like this because it's well, quite a lot larger than we're used to. End it off and do the other side as well. I love these little ends on the cord. It just makes it a little, seem a little bit more finished and it's something to hang on to. And basically they're just cute. So now I'm just going to trim. So this is my opening open end up here. It's like a little pocket for the cord ends. And I'm just going to trim away the little corners and the side seam and into the top corner a little bit too. Not absolutely right up to the edge, just nearby so that it just takes some of the bulk away. And then we just want to turn that out the right way. So this is possibly the most challenging part of this. And I just like to use my pencil sometimes to help me push that out. You don't want to put anything too sharp in. It's very tempting to pick up the scissors, but I have learned that if you use scissors that have got points, they go straight through. So it's just a little pocket that takes the cord ends. So when we're putting on putting a double cord on, so I've already done this one here, so that we can pull them from each side. So this one I just threaded in here all the way around and this one on the opposite side I'm going to just thread that one in all the way around and then we're going to tuck those ends into our little cord end pocket and we will have a wonderful little drawstring bag. How fun is that? So these drawstrings work really nicely when you've got one at each end. So you just thread from one end and thread from the other end. And they work really well. It's, you do need twice as much cord as possibly not doing that, but they just draw up so nicely. So now I'm just going to poke those ends of the cord into that little pocket there. Just make sure that they're well and truly in. And I'm just going to stitch across there. I'm going to do it on the sewing machine. and come back the other way as well and then just end that off trim away any little bits of thread that are hanging around as they do and we have the cutest little drawstring bag so we've now got two little drawstring bags so don't forget if you uh, 
if you want to pop that little bead or some a tiny button or just a little stitch in the corners that will help hold but the, the, the lining will stay in without that and we've got our little pockets and things if we want to put things inside there um, I just quite like the idea of stitching those corners in it just holds it together nicely so that was the little uh, small drawstring bag using our two and a half inch strips that was project number 10 I will see you again with project number 11